It may look like something from a sci-fi horror flick, but don't be alarmed. This is not a sinister mind control experiment. The headgear being modelled here by Caroline Rice is an electroencephalogram, or EEG cap, used to indicate brain activity, and it's all quite harmless. I'm adding electro gel, and so I can create sort of an electric um, bridge between the scalp and these electrodes. So I'm adding gel to each of the electrodes, and as I do that, each of the lights will turn green. Um, as I'm getting good connection to the scalp. It's not actually puncturing her head, it's just going onto the scalp, putting a little bit of the gel yeah. onto, onto her scalp. The cap measures theta oscillations, brain waves if you like, in an effort to understand more about how the brain reacts to external stimuli. In particular, they want to know how these brain waves affect spatial memory through active and passive navigation and decision making. In order to gather the necessary data, subjects were divided into two groups before being sat in front of a computer screen and asked to tackle this digital maze. One group, known as the free group, went through the maze actively deciding which directions to go in through a process of trial and error as they explored the maze for themselves. After a break, they were then given a test in which they have to find a target in the maze by remembering the route. The people in the second group, the guided group as it's called, do the same tasks but they are yoked to a free subject, meaning they simply follow what's in front of them. During the navigation, they aren't actively deciding which direction to go in the maze. They are simply following who, uh, where the subject before them went in the maze. Yeah. So they're just following, kind of like a passenger in a car, passively observing um, where they're going. Another car analogy, she says, might be comparing those drivers who rely on a GPS device to direct them versus those who use road signs or map books and therefore have to concentrate and use their memory more. The data for this project have been collected over the 2015-16 and 2016-17 academic years by other students. Rice spent much of the summer going through this mass of information and making it usable and ready for analysis. What I've had to do is there's a really long process and pre-processing, a lot of steps that it takes to actually clean up the data well enough uh, to start the analysis. And this involved getting rid of what Rice calls bad channels from the electrodes and filtering out any erroneous data caused by a subject blinking, for example. You have to get rid of all of that and filter it out in order to finally actually be able to analyze this data. Preliminary results have been promising, she says, supporting the hypothesis that the free group, i.e. the subjects who had to figure out the navigation of the maze for themselves, exhibited greater spatial memory than the others, and are more able to learn the spatial layout of an environment. And then with the EEG data, we hope to find, we're looking at theta oscillations in the frontal cortex, and so we expect to find increased theta oscillations Is in this group. Is that what people might call brainwaves? <laughs> <laughs> it's a type of brainwave, yeah. <laughs> Everybody experiences what it's like to, to explore in, a, in an environment and learn where things are located. So spatial navigation is important to, to everybody. Some people are very good at it, some people are not very good at it, and we want to understand the mechanisms by which people you know, are good at being able to explore their environment and remember where information is located and if we can help people who are, who are bad at, at being able to explore their, their environment. The most fun part, of course, is when you finally get the data that you can analyze and you pull up the plot and you're like, wow, this actually did what I expected it to do. Using these new, cleaned up data, Rice is now able to continue working on the project for her senior year honors thesis. In the meantime, she advises, if you want to give your brain more of a workout, try not to be so reliant on your GPS next time you take a drive.